I'm in Mushroom, this is Mushroom Games, and before we get back to our woodcutting from last time, we do have some things to take care of. First of all, when I was uh, gathering my sugarcane to make books, I ended up with a surplus of resources I did not want to use, and so I threw them into the void. Very much unfortunately, I also threw away my enchanted jungle axe. And so now I have crafted a second jungle axe to replace that uh, accident, which was really just incredibly embarrassing to do. And um, it'll probably be um, plugged in just after this. Beyond uh, that, though, we really do have a lot of good progress ready to make. We have stuff for a pickaxe, stuff for our wood bag, and stuff for a sword. Because right over here, we have just enough iron for our second enchanted iron block which is very exciting for me. Um, so, first, let's craft our bag. Two enchanted birch in a chest pattern with a enchanted leather in the middle, holding 640 per item. Nice. Then, a stick and two of those for a golem sword giving 80 damage, 125 strength, 25 defense, and the Iron Punch ability, a hexagon with nice damage, and we just leveled up our carpentry, and now let's upgrade, let's make some books. And I'm not exactly sure how the best book combination goes in this, but I uh, have a rough idea you might say, and uh, we're just going to go with that. So first off, four books because I'm thinking I don't need to upgrade my gold axe because it's just so fast by itself, but I'm thinking if I make a pickaxe, I might want to actually put Efficiency 5 on it and combine these books should that be possible. And I also want to put a higher efficiency on my axe, perhaps, although I am not yet sure. On top of this, I have looked into some combat recommendations and it is truly as simple as get talismans. That's a very just wide scale. You can put nice reforges on them, and they make your life better. It's that type of thing. And I just went to the wrong cupboard. I'm sorry. We're looking for our diamond pick, but instead I went the very wrongest of ways. So what do we have here? We have efficiency 2, a smelting touch, and a telekinesis. A telekinesis we put on with gold. And the more enchants you put onto something, the more it costs. So first, let's combine um, smelting touch and efficiency four. Okay, and how much will it cost to put an extra efficiency on this? Ten. Okay. How much will it cost to combine? What happens? So you get five from two efficiency fours. For six levels, that's relatively affordable. You put efficiency five on your jungle axe for 12 levels and level up your enchanting skill. We now have an efficiency and smelting touch book to put onto our gold pickaxe for 16 levels and an efficiency 4 book to put onto our diamond pickaxe that 
we must hope never to throw away because we will not have enough levels to fix it. Hello, I'm Disgruntled. Also, I'm from the future. And to anyone who may have more experience doing this than me, you may notice the horrible mistake I've just made. That, of course, being that I uh, put far too many enchantments onto a gold pickaxe, and also that I put smelting touch on a gold pickaxe, both of which are incredibly bad ideas for a reason that I really need to keep in mind more often. That being, gold pickaxes are only good for stone and coal. And beyond that, nothing. You get nothing. I'll, I'll, admittedly, I will be able to use this pickaxe if I ever need to make more stone bricks, but I've really done all the stone brick construction I ever planned to need, so we're a bit late for that, really. Eh, anyhow, back to your regularly scheduled programming, hopefully with less incompetence sprinkled in. Now let's hop back over here and put down our newly valuable tools, because if we lost them right now, I would have... I would be very upset with myself. And now set down our papers and combine our two swords. 50 damage bonus. When fighting undead, you'd get 60. I believe strength has an impact on overall damage, although I'm not exactly sure how that works. It might list it in here, so strength increases your base melee damage. So, okay, so it's basically a, somehow it factors math in, and then you get a bit more damage. All right, uh, that sounds good. So, all of these swords, now the golem sword. And I do really have a mind to look into something called a, uh, the, uh, some, actually, I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's something along the lines of Skyblock Tools mod or something. And I do know that, at least the one I'm thinking of, but perhaps not that particular name, is allowed, and it prohibits you from dropping tools in this manner. And then there's one thing to point out. I got unexpectedly gifted a large sum of money from a friend. And I'm just not going to make use of it yet, because I think it seems kind of cheeky to, you know, do that. I'll just still treat it as a 38k, but should there ever be a limited time offer, I will most definitely utilize a little bit of this trust. And so we speak to the blacksmith. Our objective is still to enchant something, but I'm gonna try a reforge. So you want coal for it. One second. All right, we're back. And I don't know if he only wants coal for this free trial version or if this is general, but epic. Okay, so it gives 25 extra strength, 20% crit, and 4% damage. And I really don't know what a good reforge is in this case. So I'm just gonna take epic because a 20% uh, but it's crit damage not crit chance. Um, but anyhow that seems like a fairly good deal for this. And after we get the growth books we're looking for, I do in fact intend to put them on to my golem armor and take them for a test drive. I am indeed very excited for this. But first, in the habit of all grand success stories, you must first gather far too much dark oak in order to make a book. Brilliant. There's one, there's two. Scoot that over. And, uh, let's keep that there so we don't accidentally throw it. If I'd thrown my gold axe, I would have been equally sad, but I think I would have noticed it, because seeds and pumpkins 
that I was tossing into the void are a similar enough color if you're not paying attention, but you'd notice gold if you dropped it. And, uh, you snuck up on a little fairy soul. Very nice. Uh, we'll probably have enough to go and get another permanent health or permanent random boost soon, so that's also kind of nice. Um, last episode I kind of lost track of time and just wandered off in my head for a bit, but I uh, hope you don't mind. It was really enjoyable on my end. If not, I'll work to avoid that in future. And... Ah, I haven't put telekinesis on this. Whatever. We're good. We'll just cross that bridge when we come to it, I guess. And, uh... Already to Dark Oak. No, Dark... Yeah, Dark Oak. I was right. Um, Dark Oak 3 giving us a portal to the Dark Thicket, which is where we are now. Very nice. Very, very nice indeed. These trees are also quite bothersome to cut if you don't have axes like these. So, we time... We I think we did things in the right order, personally. And this bridge is cool. Now, speaking of which, before we just get off into the wood gathering exclusivity section, I would like to comment on a few plans for my base. Some blocks are not available because of the multi-version compatibility used on Hypixel. And so there's no in-stone bricks available, among other things, such as stone brick walls, which is why I use iron bars on my minion hub. So we'll just be leaving in-stone on the enchanting pedestal, although we might add some roofing to it later on. I'm planning on perhaps building a glass containment area and in the traditional farm underneath our storage section. We could perhaps make a sugarcane farm so that we could more easily gather it when we needed to make books. For our profit-based farms later on, I've been recommended quite extensively to look into pumpkins as reportedly the farm boots they award at their highest tier recipe are quite good. Beyond that, I have quite a mind to actually redo the bridge connecting my uh, storage area to the primary islands that we spawned on, and perhaps doing something more with them as the game progresses. And, of course, probably updating my mini base as we go, just for the funsies of it. At any rate, we will be back very, very shortly with sufficient wood. Before I continue, though, I would like to point out one thing. I came up into this area because the ice intrigued me, and then I saw this mossy cobblestone, and it is, of course, indicative of yet another fairy soul. But I do believe that should be our only interruption. Thanks. Wood collection is going at quite an excellent pace, and I have applied telekinesis to both my jungle axe and epic golem sword, but there is one matter of storage we need to sort out before we can gather any more. That being, we have nowhere to put it, and so we are going to go ahead and begin enchanting this uh, oak, dark oak. First out of the surplus chest, and then out of the primary. And as far as I recall, it takes about eight to do a single book for growth. 
So it does look like we will have enough, which I like. Although we will still take some time, of course, to get there. So drop those three into that stack. And let's just go ahead and get out a bunch of wood. I don't know what else we'll need it for. And, uh, but yeah, let's check what else we'll need it for. Uh, gross stuff. But yeah. Gross book. That's gonna be our main goal for this collection, so we can be fairly calm about how we expend the rest of our dark oak. I am wondering one other thing, though. That being whether or not it would be viable to, f whether we should upgrade this by continuing leveling our birch collection, or if we should simply continue making level one bags, and if we can make multiple skill-specific bags, because if we can, there's a very great potential for storage. But really, we're only a few thousand away now, and, I mean, we were set, like, we have reduced it by more than half, and we are already level six. So, this really will only be a moment. Hello again. I am now quite just disappointed because, uh, the section's audio at this time is no longer present. We are now at this time on screen, we have just made our first four Growth 4 books and are now proceeding to the anvil to put them into use, but of course we have to unpack our gear from the wardrobe first. And of course, in the, the Nether Star format, using hotkeys to move it is inefficient or sometimes impossible. It really varies. There, the uh, growth onto a golem armor chestplate, then an inverse format that does not work, correcting it now with the growth armor on the helmet for another 10 levels, and then, of course, realizing that we do not have enough levels to apply our last two books, namely to our pants and to our shoes. But still, it's relatively easy to get new experience points, and so we just set down our wood bag and deposit our paper and growth books until we are in a place where we may use them well. We're done with our axes. We've gotten all the wood we'll probably need for quite some time. And now, back to adventures on the hub. Now, having put on said enchantments, let us journey back to the end and see if we can actually do any damage while making a few, a very few stops along the way. First, just checking to see if there are any interesting looking talismans we could invest in. And no, not in this part of the area, the adventurer. Hello there. So, all right. Intimidation, mine affinity, village, skeleton, and zombie. Lots of expensive for not enough results quite yet, I do believe. And so we now make our way down this long trodden path once again. And thinking of the things we pass along our journey, it may well soon be time to look into how pets behave and perhaps get, perhaps get one from B or whatever variation of the joke her name is because she sells B pets and her name is spelled B E A and I don't know if that's Bia or B or something 
this has been an issue before and I don't really care to dedicate so much time to it again. And so let's just hop around the side of this and give a few test runs to our ability as we go. We have 468 max health now, so we might be able to take one hit from an Enderman without just being absolutely rendered concave. But, uh, I have no great hope. Oh, my ability's on cooldown. Alright. I guess you can't... Uh, it, it seems a bit finicky about use timing. And so, now, for the culmination of most of this episode's goals, admittedly, we still need a few more experience points to finish everything. Hello. Hello. We died. Uh, but you're still at low health, and now I have more health. I killed an Enderman. I only died once. Okay, now we just need to see if we can like, just avoid hits, which we did. So what have we learned from this? First, we are lame and squishy human beings. And we need, and we definitely need to follow the advice of using talismans for boosts and perhaps after we finish enchanting this and this, looking into more effective reforges. I hope you have a very good day, and I hope to see you again. Goodbye.